Hi, everybody. This is Laurie Handlers, and you're listening to an episode of Sex and Happiness, a show about your sex and your happiness. And I want you to know that they go together. I, they're your birthright. They really are. Sex and happiness are your birthright, and they they one leads to the other, the other, the other. It's like a never-ending cycle. And um, the less you resist this, the more pleasure you'll have in your life and the more sex and happiness you'll have. So you'll find out more today about how you get happier and sexier as I speak to my guests. So let me introduce her right away. Her name is Brianna Krebeyer, and she's an intimacy and relationship coach with a focus and philosophy based in sacred sexuality. She is a transformational facilitator who believes that the development of personal empowerment and trust are the foundations of growth. So welcome to the show, Brianna. Thank you, Lori. I'm so happy to be here today with you. I'm always happy to be with you. Me too. Um, virtually, in person, all of the things. Yeah, I was trying to think about the last time I saw you, and I think that was in Mexico in November. Yep, and, yep um, absolutely. Yeah, and that was a wonderful time that we had together. And um, yeah, ever since we met, like we just had, and we met like, I don't know, in, in Portland a bunch of years ago at ISTA, and we just keep going and going and going. So it's, it's wonderful. It's mm. really wonderful. And now we're getting to work more closely together. So yeah. Yeah. So let me tell some, people what we're Lots of juicy talking. stuff. What? Yeah, we have <laughs> a lot of juicy stuff together. We really do. <laughs> Let's talk about what, let's tell people what we're going to talk about today. And then we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit more on your background. Um, I always call myself the queen of emotional release. And I say that actually nothing works very well unless we do emotional release. These humans that we are, um, we need clearing all the time. I actually need a clearing this morning. I need a clearing last night. I just lost it last night. I went into a total survival jag. I don't, and it was tipped off by food shopping. Like we had, we had all this food, but we, I didn't think we had enough room to like store it. And I thought it was going to go bad. And so it flipped me out like as if we had nothing. And I had to do, oh, I had to do a lot of emotional release. Over the last few days, I have a lot. So let's, how did you become, you know, let's, let, so people, you, it, I just want to tell you that you're in store for something great because Brianna is as much a queen of emotional release as I am. I just have a few years on her, but other than that, like she loves it and she, and she practices emotional release and teaches it. And so, uh, but first we're going to find out like, how did you come to be you? You know, yeah. like how did you get to be this in the world, a teacher of transformational work in the world? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Lori. Um, you know, I think because I was always such an emotional person, <laughs> I mean, like f fire, like, you know, fire is my, and I was told that Me from too. a very young age, like, absolutely. I was just, you know, told um, that I had a fiery personality and before I even was, was me. Right. And my mom had my astrological chart done when I was less than a year old. Wow. Um, you know, probably, probably within the first couple of weeks of, of being out of her body and in this world. And, you know, she was seeking the guidance of the stars in how do I raise this being um, who's born under a fire sign. And I think that she really paid attention to what was showing up there, showing up in the space um, and encouraged it. That was the other thing. I could have full on temper tantrums and exude my fire all over the kitchen without being told no, without being told to sit still. I don't think any of that really started to come into my sphere until I started school. And then it was just a big ball of confusion. <laughs> but I also, for as fiery as I am, I'm really good at behaving, you know, because it was part of the theatrics was looking good. Like yeah, I knew yeah. how to look good in front of, in front of a room of people if I needed to. So my teachers always had this really different version of me than my mom ever had at home. And she was like, I'm just not sure which of you is, you know, the real you. And the truth of it now, you know, as I'm coming into myself, is it's all true, right? These are all these pieces of me. So um, 
you know, that little tidbit about my mom having her, having my chart read, right. That clues you in that I had probably a little bit of a different childhood. Um, my mom was the high priestess of a coven when I was growing up. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. So, <laughs> oh my God. I was thinking, you know, okay, she was a hippie, but sure, like, yes, that too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, you know, so I was going to meditation classes and workshops, you know, while I was just being carried around in a little baby carrier, you know, before I, before I had any understanding of this. And I've been doing a lot of reflection around that lately because um, I think because of the way that the world is, is happening now and I'm involved in spiritual communities worldwide, you know, tens of thousands of people that I'm connected to in one way or another that are all into the same kind of thing. And there weren't yoga studios and meditation studios. This would have been in the early 80s. Um, you know, it was hard to find those in Columbus, Ohio, right? <laughs> so I'm from the Midwest and the flattest. And, um, you know, it's a city of about a million people. So there's quite a bit going on and there's a large university there. But it's... Um, you know, it's still the Midwest. Yeah, I've been there, been there quite a few times to Columbus, Ohio. So my sister went to college there and also to Ohio State. And also when I was in industry, we had a division there. So I used to go to Columbus a lot. I like but you're it. not from there. And if you haven't no. been there, I think a lot of people just think like, what, there's like cows everywhere, you know? So there, it actually no, it's is a, a fairly city. progressive city. Yeah. It's a very <laughs> progressive city for the Midwest. It's super progressive. If I had to live anywhere, I live in Columbus or Cleveland if I had to live in the Midwest. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. So, so your mother sounds amazing. Your mother sounds like this. Is she still alive? She is. Yeah, she's, she is. She's incredible. She's incredible. And, you know, we certainly have, as you've actually had some witness to some of my processing around my mom, you yeah. know, and, um, and so we have a very complicated relationship in that way. We're a lot alike, you know, I'm definitely fault. She introduced me to everything of who I am in this, in these ways. And, you know, some of my friends growing up were revolting by not wanting to go to church or shortening their skirts if they went to, you know, Catholic schools where they had to wear uniforms. And I remember like kind of wanting to revolt and not go to, you know, coven, <laughs> <laughs> not go to the full moon ceremony or not go to, um, you know, the Samhain that we were, space that we were holding. But honestly, it was so much fun. You know, it was, it was so much fun. It was such an eclectic, beautiful group of people. So my, you know, I was born into it. I mean, that's what I have to say it's about fabulous. how did I, it's especially my connection to spirituality and, and sexuality. I mean, a lot of it was, it was really laid down as a foundation for me growing up. Lots of challenges, of course, kind of popping up along the way, but not the traditional, yeah. like when we were talking before this and, you know, and I figured I'd just cover this here. But when we were talking right before we hopped on here and you said, you know, how you got to be who you are in church and growing up. And I'm like, yeah, there wasn't. <laughs> got it. I mean, that's it. You're very unique then in that respect, because most people got to be who they are by re really rebelling against what was offered. Um, rebelling against uh, the, maybe uh, the political party their parents were voting for, rebelling against the way their parents ate. Like if their parents were meat eaters, they become vegetarian. Uh, re rebelling against the church, uh, whatever the church is, the religious uh, institution, rebelling against school, finding their own way. And it sounds like you were given like a straight line into like, this is who you will be, my darling, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe your mother knew and maybe she didn't know. Like, I don't know. You know, sometimes parents just do stuff and they're kind of unconscious. Like, I feel like I got who I am from my father. Mm -hmm. Although I got my sense of humor from my mother. Thank goodness for that. But um, I don't think I could be doing this if when my when my mother was still alive. Like, I, she was already... She, I, I turned out to be exactly who she was afraid I would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... And it sounds more like you're in alignment with who your mother, how you started out, which is so cool. I'm, I'm a little envious, you know, like <laughs> a little less cortisol 
in the body, you know, having to, re having to rebel. Sure. Yeah. Well, the rebellion came, you know, the rebellion came in its own ways, certainly. And I think a lot of our friction happened when I started to dig more into some of the transformational pieces um, that rubbed up against some of her philosophies and beliefs, you know, so we've definitely found the way to, we've found our own methods and ways to not get along <laughs> over the years. And yeah. what I keep coming back to is this gratitude um, sometimes that I want to scream in her face and say, you made me exactly who I am right now. And not in a way like I'm pissed off or that she made me that way because I'm acting this other way. You know, if you have opposing beliefs with your parents, you could say the same thing. I am the way I am because you made me this way because right. I had to go against you. Right. But it's really, it comes from this really deep loving place within me. You know, of like, yeah. thank you for laying the way. You know, I was listening to people talking about energy centers in the body and how the earth speaks to you and going on goddess quests and things before I was seven years old. <laughs> you know, it was like, wow, that's <laughs> so cool. And now I have to understand it as an adult, yeah. you know, and, and still kind of understanding, um, you know, my own imposter syndrome, which is honestly is can I say fucking? It's fucking hilarious to me yeah. that I am going through thinking that, feeling that, feeling uncomfortable and kind of sticky in that space, considering that I was born into it. Today, I am speaking with Brianna Krebeyer, and um, we are t we're going to talk about emotional release. And um, let's go. You you talk about it a little bit. How, how sure. do you define it? What what do you what is it? for you? When did you first start doing it? And why is it so important to you such that you now teach it? I mean, it would be a bizarre podcast if we both just started doing emotional release, right? People just for the next 20 minutes, we're just screaming and we're crying and we're letting ourselves go completely. But I don't know what that's like to listen to in the car, you know, as you're commuting from one place to the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, so emotional release is you know, the thing that I really think about is it's um, the fastest way for me to come back to ease, to come back into ease and to reclaim my power, you know, and that's a little bit of the why I do it. I'm looking for a is. bell so I can ring it, but it's too far away from me. <laughs> yes. Does your bell come Fastest. to your podcast? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Um, the fastest way to come back to ease and a reclamation of personal power. And it's interesting because I can think about all of the times that I haven't used it since I've learned it. And I, I learned this technique from you, actually, mm -hmm. the first time that we met. Um, and, and I say this technique, you know, but really it's, it's a way of life. It's a, it's a life philosophy of moving energy moving anything, just moving it and to be in the practice of it and to be in the, um, feels like a connection and a flow to life, really back to life force energy. So true. It's like, it's, um, well, f f I didn't know that you first learned it from me. So I, I feel very, um, I feel uh, gratitude that you took it on. I feel gratitude that you took it on so deeply. Um, it's, it really is like Tantra, breath, sound, and movement. It's breath, sound, and movement and moving the energy from the denser places in our body, you know, where we store things that we don't know we store them, and then moving it out to the lighter places in our body uh, and out so it doesn't keep... I mean, I'm at, like, when I say to you, I did it yet today and yesterday and the day before, I mean, I moved it really quickly in the old days when I first started doing my emotional release, I had to do it for like an hour to get anywhere. Now I could do it for like one song and then I'm fine. And this but is why you're in such great shape, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Before that, I mean, but I'm down to a layer now, which is so deep. It's so much survival that hasn't been dealt with. Well, it's so much, it's not a big quantity but it's made up of this piece. I was on a, I was on a online course with, with Michael, my partner, and I had this thing to cough up to him. And I said, I hate waiting. 
And sometimes I feel like you make me wait, not on purpose. You just like get distracted and I'm waiting. And when you do that, I feel abandoned. All of a sudden, abandoned came out and I went, oh my God, that must be when I'm two years old, one and a half years old. And I also have this tone associated with it that it comes out of my mouth and he's now taken to saying tone. And I stop and I, I'm down to this really primal layer of survival versus abandonment and dying. And it's like, I did, I came up today, it came up yesterday, it came up the day before, all of a sudden, because it's up now, it's like on my hit parade. Mm -hmm. So, wow, I have to do it every day now so I can like move that out of my system. Yeah, so yeah, move. absolutely. I think that's a great example because oftentimes, um, I think people have the misconception that it's about moving anger or sadness as if those are the only two things like, yeah, we don't have a society that really accepts anger or sadness. I get that. I have a lot of discomfort with witnessing other people and their anger and their sadness. Like it's taken some practice and some learning about what, you know, what inside of me has resistance to feeling that come out of people, but there's so much that can be tapped into. I will use it sometimes with my excitement, you know, like even preparing, you know, to talk to you today and to, to be here in this space. I had all of this excitement that was coming up and I just used some emotional release techniques to really get that out, to be more present, yeah, you know, to be more in my ease from like what gets excitement kind of gets stuck up in my stomach, you know, under my rib cage, um, shame and guilt. I mean, I, there isn't anyone that I work with, students or clients or, you know, neighbors that I don't teach these techniques to because I really believe that it's the answer to everything. You know, when I'm doing my coaching practice, like we can talk and process, but it's not going to change anything if people aren't using the tools. Exactly. Oh my God. So good. So, yeah, I mean... So maybe it is that you're a fire personality and maybe it is that I'm a fi I am too, a fire sign and a fire personality. Maybe it is that we got the gift of fire and we realized like we didn't want, I mean, I, I remember my mother telling me, you know, could you, you're so intense. Could you just like chill? I don't think she used that word. And I said, ma, I tried pouring water on myself and it didn't work. I can't water out my fire. I can't put it out. It's just like this, combustion and so maybe that's why we took to it so well and other people you know who are more watery tend to flow with it or whatever but i i accuse i'm just gonna say i accuse all people today in at least the western world i i you know i don't know about third world so much i feel like there's different things happening like when i'm in india it's different people look at me they're like what you know, I don't think, I love my, I mean, I respect my parents. I love the gods and the goddesses. Like the religion didn't do anything to me, whatever. You know, and I just go, yeah, do it anyway. Try it anyway, you know. Just see what's there. See what's you know, just there. Just see. It needs to yeah. move. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, so, just, you know, Kate, Kate and I have been facilitating this lately. And um, we have really opposite personalities. So we use that in the facilitation. Because she can really, you know, my tendency is that when I have something coming up, it comes out of my mouth, like immediately, you know, I have a feeling, I'm talking about the feeling, it's all just happening, boom, 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 you know, and I recognize that that can feel a little bit like being vomited all over to someone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, I can use emotional release to the, when I recognize that that's happening, I can catch myself and just say, you know, it allows me to take a step back. Now, Kate, on the other hand, um, has a tendency more to be a stuffer. You know, she stuffs the, the things down and down and in and in. And that's comfortable for her because that's how she's, you know, that's her wiring, right, is to be a stuffer. And so she uses the emotional release to give her the momentum to get the things moving. Yeah, How, whatever you do, however you do it. 
Let's talk about the workshops that you're doing. So you're doing them online. At first you weren't doing them online. No, no. So I've, um, I've actually, I've worked them into a number of my different workshops over the years. Mm -hmm. Over, I guess the past two years, I've been doing, using them in my in-person workshops, whether we're talking, whether it's a healing workshop or we're talking about sacred sexuality um, or even just workplace dynamic. You okay. know, there's one of, there's one of the techniques, the hand scream, and I teach that in stress management for corporate settings. <laughs> That's excellent. And I just imagine that there's not enough closets for everyone to go into, to go do their hand scream, you know? And I love that idea of like, just in the middle of a meeting, everyone leaves you know, or maybe they just turn their chairs away from each other and they do a hand scream. <laughs> I think that's wonderful. It's so, it's wonderful. Yeah, so, so that they can clear out whatever the thought was, whatever the feeling was that was bad for a moment, things were going south. And then they can come back to presence and ease. Right, and so a few weeks ago, um, we were all set up, or I guess it's been about a month now, we were all set up to do the first one that I was going to have in Philadelphia. So I moved to Philadelphia the last week of February and um, was just starting to get settled in, was starting to connect a lot with the community. And we were all set up to have an emotional release workshop. And it was like right on the day where some cities were starting to recognize there's something going on here. Right. And we're going to start taking some precautions. And so we made the call, I mean, maybe 18 hours before the workshop to do it virtually. And we had no clue how we were going to create this environment. I mean, it was such a puzzle. And luckily we love doing this kind of problem solving together. And we both had a lot of things coming up that we didn't know. You know, there was, there was so much uncertainty that day. And we thought, great, so this is just going to be a test on it. And one thing that's really important for me is setting the context of what emotional release is, when to use it, how to use it. Um, you know, it sounds like some of some of your viewers or so your listeners are going to be familiar with what emotional release technique is already. And then other people are probably sitting here going, what are they even talking about? What is this even? So should yeah, we probably, backtrack a little bit? <laughs> yeah, sure. It's both and I mean, I've been I talk about emotional release in pretty much everything. And there are people who just are probably going to listen to this podcast for the first time ever. And then there'll be people who have been listening for years and years. I mean, what do I know? You know, people, right. I, as I travel around the world, people say to me, you know, I, I listen to that podcast where you da da da. And I'm like, really? You know, how did you hear about it? And, oh, I've been listening to you for years. So I don't know. You know, that's not anything. My station gives me rough measurements. <laughs> I don't know really who all the people are and where they come from. So I figured that we would backtrack at least to say it's a series of techniques. I teach seven in kind of the initial um, phase of emotional release, seven techniques, exercises as ways to, to move energy in the body. And they have to do with breath, sound, and movement, right? Just to kind of recap exactly what it is that we're talking about. Right. And so that can, yes, be taught virtually, but I really, I think that part of what is so important and profound is being able to have a connection point. And that's what I was worried about not having with people who were just joining virtually and on a screen, you know, and really like, can we make eye contact? Can we be connected with the group of people here that are practicing this? Because it can bring up a lot of really intense stuff for people. You know, right. one of my concerns too, as a facilitator is, am I really supporting people in the group? So I do a lot about creating buy-in, you know, are you here? Are you going to, are you ready to go for it? You know, like really allowing conversation to move and flow. So it's probably a good 40 minutes or so of context setting and getting people really on board before we even start to give transmissions of what the tools are. And that important distinction too, because we're not actually doing, you know, and you've spoken to this a lot, but we're not doing demos. We're not doing demonstrations or talking you through or giving you little diagrams of how to do each practice. We really are. I mean, there's no part of me um, showing a tool that isn't real. Exactly. Like there is not a demo that's like fake. You're going into actress mode or I'm going into actress mode. Like 
when we lay down on the floor or we stand up and do a hand scream, which we should actually say to people what a hand scream is, when I'm doing it, it's real. All of a sudden stuff comes up. There's stuff that right there waiting to be expressed. Mm-hmm. Whether I think there is or not. I do. That's the other thing. People say, well, I'm not in the mood. I'm not feeling angry now. And I go, yeah, right. Well, let's dig a little bit and see what's in there already. <laughs> you don't need any external stimulus to make you something. Nobody- but if you need something, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you something right now to get pissed off about. <laughs> I mean, honestly, even from saying that, like, oh, yeah, I bet. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, what do you, what do you mean? Well, right there, you can move that right there. Whatever that was that just started to bubble to the surface, you can move that energy. That's right. So good. <laughs> How about your self-righteousness? We can move that. <laughs> yeah. Self-righteousness is big. Be, uh, attitude is big feeling holier than thou or feeling lesser than or whatever is big. I saw a cartoon, I think yesterday or the day before about um, going to a genie and asking a genie for self-love. And then the genie says, I think it was on Monique Darling's um, Facebook. And then it says, uh, the genie goes, uh, you, you know, poof. And the person looks at the genie and says, you know, nothing's changed. And the genie goes, that's right. <laughs> like self-love already exists, just like everything else. <laughs> Nothing has changed. So yeah, all that stuff, whatever it is, uh, I don't feel good enough. I feel too much. Mm-hmm. I am too much. You're too this. Or, or I'm numb. You know, I'm not feeling anything. Great. Right. Work with that. Big one. There's always something to work with. No, no, me either. I I feel all the things. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I I say that, but um, as as everything's been occurring over this last month, there has I really have been feeling a lot of ease, you know, and not ease because I'm okay with what's occurring in the world. Like I'm certainly not, but there's some piece of me that keeps coming back to ease and you know that kind of makes me feel uneasy <laughs> sometimes it's not a, it's not exactly a numbness but there's something in there that i'm like okay am i missing something you know and i and i go deep into these self questions and sometimes i use that in the emotional release last night for instance so i was joining you last night you know without mm-hmm. having planned it and just went for it until i fell asleep just really wow. went for it. I did hand screams in my bed last night. I just really, really did. So we should tell people what that is. Hands okay, great. Yeah. yeah, they can practice it right now as we talk about it. Yeah, we could do it. We can make sound right on air and, and we can do it right now too, because who knows, we might play this video. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so should we do it? Do you want to, yeah. why, why don't you instruct it? Okay, great. I feel like I'm being put on the, on, um, I'm testing I'm being you. Testing by my teacher. Testing yeah. Your apprenticeship. <laughs> this is like literally a planted secret. Go ahead. Um, just, you know, <laughs> move myself a little bit here. So I'm shaking, I'm shaking my body, which is how I always start. And I'm going to stand up too. I've been sitting on a stool, but I'm going to stand up so that I can okay. really feel my body. Ah, And I always start taking a couple of deep breaths and really feeling into um, areas of tension in my body first, feeling my feet planted on the ground and and giving some shakes, like some full body ah, shakes, almost like a Qigong practice of shaking, kind of loose through the knees and pushing Mm. through the bottoms of the feet so that I can really feel into me in this moment. Although I could certainly use this hand scream to move all of the stuff that I am feeling from everyone else around me and in the world as well. Good. Mm-hmm. That's exactly why you might use it. Mm-hmm. Everyone's feeling that. So this is why it's so important that we tell them this one at least. Yeah. And then taking um, the back of one hand and placing it in the palm of the other hand and pressing it over the mouth pretty pretty strong over the mouth so that there's a seal that's occurring Mm. and then screaming into my hand. And sometimes I actually do a pretty silent scream 
And other times I really let the sound move through. Now, the things that I keep in mind when I'm doing this is that my body, for every emotional release technique, it's so important that I'm caring for my body. So one of the reasons that I feel into where there's tension and that I kind of um, start to feel into my body so that I know that I'm caring for it in this process. Um, it's actually, I think that it can be easy just like if you are a runner and you go for a mile run, you know, you're not, you're not really setting yourself up for success if you haven't started doing a little bit of a walk run with that. So although these techniques are accessible to everyone, it's just important to keep in mind that they're physical. Yeah, we actually are in a body. We have a body and- We and have a body, right. Body's a miracle. Right. It's a miracle. Absolutely. Mir and when, we're, when I'm moving emotions so often, you know, I could just go wild, especially with all the fiery energy, right? I could just go totally wild, but I need to think about how am I going to feel after this and how am I going to feel the next day and really want to take care of myself. So in order to um, be safe with my body, I'm moving my body as I scream into my hands. And also okay. it sends the energy up through the body. Um, I imagine that it's kind of coming from my root, from my base, and it's moving up through my torso. And I like picture this scream moving out the top of my head so that I can take deep breaths and stay in almost like a circular breathing with my scream. All right, great. So just give us like one or two. Okay. And it, it could be silent. It could be, it could be a little sound. Wow, what everyone doesn't know is that you are really making sound, but your hands are muffling that sound so tremendously that no one would know that you were screaming. One more. It literally sounds like if you would imagine if somebody was putting their hand over your mouth when you were making sound. She's <sighs> great, Brianna, really great. Uh. <laughs> and I do a lot of moving and a lot of breathing, particularly with the hand scream. When I first started working with that, I would always get lightheaded. Mm. And I recognized that there was something, you know, there was something that was missing. It was breath. <laughs> got it. Yeah, got it. Really good. So everybody out there listening, look, you, we're going to just suggest that you try it. Maybe you're not going to try it right now when you're listening to us, but we would love for you to try it because this is something that could help you. You could be in a meeting and it's going terribly and you go to the ladies room or the men's room and you just do a hand scream. You go to your car and do a hand scream. Um, let's say your kids are driving you crazy right now. It, everyone's home. And so you just go into the bedroom and you do a hand scream. You put your, hand, you put your hands right over your mouth and you just wiggle shake and make sound like as if you were screaming bloody murder, but nobody can actually hear that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and it can be incredibly tempting to want to do in the middle of an argument with your partner, but there's a whole other tool for that <laughs> right, 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 right. because, because it's not meant to be used as a weapon against other people. Exactly. Right. Although this is, I it's like a deeply personal pro I process. Sure. Bed, I once used it. Someone was making love to me and, uh, I didn't like what was happening. And so I just went, wait. And then I put my hands over my mouth and I went, Woo! and then he said, <laughs> emotional release. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, if, our, if we're around people who know what emotional release is, then it can be, you know, but it can be really, I think there's a temptation there sometimes yeah. to say like, well, it. what you said just pissed me off. And so now I have to go emotional release. You know, I see that yeah. happen in drama dynamics. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not what it is. So if we have a lot of stored emotions that have been stuffed for things we didn't get, for things that went un, you know, unfulfilled expectations, thwarted communication, as those are old landmark terms. Um, if we swallowed all of those down and we have these expectations that life is just going to go blah, we don't have a lot of space for the unknown. We don't have a lot of space for a lot of happiness and joy. I believe joy is an inside job. And, and if we it don't clears move, this channel. Yeah. Yeah. If we don't move those things, those times were before we were verbal, when we were verbal, all the times that things got thwarted in our lives or unfulfilled, 
if we don't move those up and out, it is very difficult to be happy. And it's weird to be sexy. It's kind of like using sex as a weapon, which I can speak about have. Um, when I'm an angry woman, the anger, I use somehow use sex around that. I might use sex for, for, for releasing that. And it's just not fair. It's not a fair exchange with a partner. Mm -hmm. um, being sexy and happy means moving it all, really moving it all and moving into what you called ease. Ease to me leads to joy. And joy is like where it's at. And I feel like that's, I can only get to that by moving all that energy up and out. That's why I discovered emotional release in the first place. So it's very, very connected. It makes space for unknown and unknown is a place of creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do I want? I got to create it. How do I do that? I make space for that to happen. And that makes all that space. What I call it is like clearing the landing strip. A plane cannot land in the jungle. It needs a strip. It can't land on all the tops of trees. If it does, it's called a plane crash. <laughs> <laughs> so it's get, in order to be able to land and then fulfill on my life, whatever that is, I got to make a clearing strip. And that's what, that's what emotional, emotional releases. releases. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So... All right. Clearing the channel, clearing the space, clearing the way. Um, and, you know, you, you kind of talked about sex as a weapon. Yeah. In, in there, like the, the ways that that's happened. There's, um, you know, there's, there's one of the techniques, I'm sure you can probably figure out which one I'm thinking of, but really that is about like, the thing that I think about is how many times I'm, I have used sex in the past and it had nothing to do with sex. It didn't even have to do with you know, love making. It was like, because I just had energy in my body and I didn't know what to do with it um, because I needed to feel good about myself. Right. And, and emotional yeah. release. It's like the more, the more emotional release that I'm doing, the more that I'm waking up to the fact of how, um, how much I used sex to fulfill some of the things that now I can use emotional release for. So good. Thank you for that vulnerability and admission. It's, I mean, we have to be human to people. We can't be on these pedestals. I mean, we are, if we're walking to talk because we're doing the things that it takes. Oh, yeah. That it takes. Oh, yeah. And, 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 you know, both of us right now are doing a lot of facilitation with our partners. And I think that's the key when I'm doing facilitate. We talk about our shit all the time because we all have, because of course we have shit. Yeah. It's like it, it's actually, it's why we're, it's why we're better at what we're doing is because we're in touch with our humanity. You know, and I, one of the first things that I say when I'm facilitating, and sometimes I say it just to take the edge off myself is like, I fuck this up all the time. And by this, I mean life, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to fuck it up. Right. And, and it's not even about having, um, it's not about not having breakdowns. It's about, you know, when I have the breakdowns, I notice that I'm having the breakdown. I can course correct more quickly and I'm in the breakdown for a shorter period of time. Exactly. Much less time spent suffering. Yay. Yay. So, okay. So first of all, how do people get in touch with you? Then we'll talk about what we're creating. What's next? Yeah. Um, so the best way to get in touch with me is through um, my Facebook group. So I co-founded a Facebook group um, called Sacred Sexuality Rising. A huge and Facebook group. Sacred a huge Sexuality. Facebook. Yeah. A hu would you huge. say a huge? Huge. Yeah, we, there's about um, 5,800 people, I think a little over 5,800 people in there, um, give or take, depending on the day and how active the social media is looking at that time. Mm -hmm. And this is, there's an awesome interview series that's starting up there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the best ways to connect with me and certainly through email as well. So um, my so through my email brianna crabier at gmail.com brianna.crabier at gmail.com all right now we need to spell that so it's brianna with one n b r i a n a dot crabier c r i i b e y e y e r okay. <laughs> i'm just like ah brianna crabier at gmail.com 
And of course, if you have any questions, you can find her through me as well. And now, da da da, we're going to talk about what we're starting up. Um, Brianna, so Brianna was my apprentice a few years ago, and she really got into me. She got into my stuff. She got into my tantra, and she really got into my book, Sex and Happiness. And now we're doing, we have a different apprentice relationship. She's apprenticing to become a facilitator at ISTA, which many of you know about. We're not going to go into all of that stuff now, but we're very close. We, we're like kindred spirits. And, um, and you know, I'm, I'm, I support her and who she is and what she does. She supports me and who I am and what I do. And uh, it's, it's really nice. We're a match made in heaven. Mm. <laughs> I'm like overflowing with heart bubbles. See, I could do a hand scream right now just from that excitement. And, and really, because it's such an honor. It's such it's, an it's, honor it's, to be here with you so and to be working on so many different fun things. And yeah. just to really, you know, to be friends with you. Thank right? you. Like, yeah, that, that is a sweet honor. That too. So we are going to take... She'll tell, I mean, really, it was more her idea than mine, but we're going to, what I think we're going to do is we're going to take my book, Sex and Happiness, and we're going to do a 10-week series on the chapters, on like actually the 10 laws of intimacy. And, um, and we're going to bring that to people with more depth. So people, we're going to give people a way to live that. And one of the things we're going to be speaking about in depth is emotional release. Right. It'll be, I mean, it'll be one of the practices um, that I, th I think there's so, there's so much value in being able to, to do this with a group of people, to have a cohort that you're really going through these things with, because you're going to be living your life over the course of the 10 weeks. Like 10 weeks is a significant period of time to take in your life, to dedicate to something like sex and happiness. You know, and I'm excited just in the facilitation of this also to see what happens in my own life while I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I just read the book. I'm, de I'm getting the book ready for Audible uh, to submit it to Audible. And so I reread it. I read it into a microphone, into taping. And uh, I went, wow. I, I, like, I blow my own mind that I knew this stuff when I knew it. You know, like, I know it now, but I knew it in 2000. I knew it in 1999. I knew it when I started writing the book. And um, I, I just get, I get blown away by what it says. And it's like, I said it. And I'm like, ah, I did that. So anyway, we're going to do and that. And now you've been living it for 20 years. Like, that's the cool thing too about the course coming up right now yeah. is that I'm still just fresh to the information, mm. you know, considering and you've been working with this and living this for 20 years and teaching it for 20 years and getting 20 years of feedback about what's working and what's not working and the struggles and the things right like you you came up with this all in your mind and now you have all of this experience to share yeah. and so i think that's one of the really dynamic pieces about this course happening now yeah and that people can can pick up on this and really live their lives in a profoundly um, more enriching way. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I just, I just have to breathe that in. Ah. Ah. So we don't know when it's going to start up yet, but if you are interested in it, you can write to me, Laurie at lauriehandlers.com. And you can tell me that you're interested in being with Brianna and myself and that you're interested in going through, you may have read Sex and Happiness and you may not have. So you're interested in receiving a copy of the book. We're gonna give that as part of the series. So you'll be able to read it and refer back to it. And then we're gonna go into it in depth, like every lesson that's in the book, including emotional release. So this was like a precursor to that. So please join us, we would love to have you. So Brianna, this is wonderful. This is the end of our time together on Sex and Happiness. And um, I really, really thank you and honor you for being my guest today and honor you for who you are. Like, it's, you know, you're not just my guest. You're not somebody that, that a PR person said, you know, take a risk on this person. She might fit into your show. <laughs> you're somebody that I know and love and you fit into everything. Mm, oh, well, Lori, thank you. It's, it's great to be here. Um, and I'm super excited about everything that we have coming up for our future work together, our future lives together. 
Yes, yes, yes. So everybody, thank you for tuning in today. It's been my pleasure to have you. These are really extraordinary times, uh, times when we're, we, I think I coined this phrase the other night, we are in the unknown of the unknown. Like this is beyond the unknown that I used to talk about. This is so unknown of the unknown. So we have to find ways of managing ourselves and, and emotional release is one of them. Thank you for being with us today. And please tune in next time when I will have another amazing guest talking to you about how sex and happiness is so important to you. It's your birthright and, um, and really how to have that for yourself and how to manage that for yourself. So this is Laurie Handler signing off. I am saying to all of you, first of all, to Brianna again, thank you. And to everybody else, namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much for being my guests today, my, my guests and my listeners today. Bye to you all.